studying the Middle East should be a focus of many uh, world leaders and important people. Um, I've tried to do a little study of it, but uh, I don't have the time, and, and, and you know, I'm just doing this free, so I don't expect that it's going to be perfect. From the scriptures, I'm trying to do a sociological and nationalist study and so forth, because after the flood, Adam Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And so we believe that there are only three races because each went on and developed their own little system. Um, I try to track things down, but I know Ham, who inhabited uh, Egypt, um, was black because, you know, um, we are all Egyptians, Africa, so Egypt was from um, Libya, from, from the Delta in Egypt, we're on to Ethiopia, and today we see it's black people living there, so I assume that it's black people living there. And many preachers have said that, um, we are the descendants of Ham. Black people are the descendants of Ham. Now, um, we go back again to the uh, situation with um, Abraham, uh, this promise to have, you know, the stars of the sun from, from children and so on. Um, children as many as the, as the stars in heaven. And so they, they substituted the Egyptian woman, Hagar, who was the servant of Sarai, to have the kids. Now, I'm going to read it in the scripture here so I get it um, straight. It is in Genesis chapter 16, uh, starting at verse 7. Now, the background is that uh, Hagar and Sarah were having problems, so, you know, because she's pregnant and Sarah can't have kids, so she ran her out of the house and, uh, and so on. So, and the angel of the Lord, reading six, chapter 16 of Genesis 7, and the angel of the Lord found Hagar by a fountain of water in the wilderness, um, by the fountain in the way of Teshur, and he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence comest thou, and whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, and submit thyself unto her, uh, under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Because the Lord had heard thy affliction, and he will be a wild man, his hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And she called the name of the Lord, and spake unto her, Thou God seest me, for she said, Have I also here looked after him that saith seeth me, wherefore the well was called Berlahoirai. Behold, it is between Kaddish and Beret. So, um, so the name Ishmael meant that um, God has heard her, um, or seen or heard or cry of her affliction, and this guy would be a wild man, um, and uh, his hand will be against every man, and every man's hand shall be against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of his brethren. Uh, I think it, it also says that, I, I gather that he's going to be indomitable. Okay? So, um, we know that around, in other words, today, the people or the descendants of, um, of Hagar and Ishmael are the people who have accepted Islam, and they are called Arabs. Uh, uh, over time, things have changed. People have married, and people have you know different relationships with different types of people, and so on. So, but generally, it seems as if uh, these people are the descendants of Ishmael, um, and, and and their religion is of such that they believe they don't have the Judaism, the Judaism sort of uh, as their philosophy now. Judaism believes in the Bible and, you know, you, you, you shouldn't kill and you, your life is important and so on. So you don't find a Jew doing a suicide bombing because, you know, of the religion. But uh, the Arabs and the Islamists, they're willing to do that. So I'm wondering then if, um, as God had said, uh, that, um, you know, he's going to be indomitable. Does this mean then that what's happening in Afghanistan, everybody that go up in Afghanistan had to leave because they can't subdue these folks, and they don't want to be subdued. So, uh, because God says that they will be wild. Um, and 
he will be a wild man and his hand will be against every man every man's hand against him uh, so on so um, there we go uh, so anybody you know picking a war with these folks down there uh, basically and um, you know you gotta look out that they're not gonna be subdued they're not gonna be dominated they're gonna be against you and you're gonna be against them and this thing will go on forever it's, it's a tragedy that uh, people like Billy Graham who had um, you know air shot to some big shots um, didn't understand this scripture at least um, because I mean, I'm not going into 9-1 again and all that stuff. I, I have my own views and so forth. But the bottom line is that if some folks had been a little more cautious and had approached this thing with a little more thought, maybe the world would have been a lot different today. Um, you know, we were on the verge of bankruptcy in 08, so there we go. Um, I hope, though, that this little uh, discourse will not answer everything but at least give some resource that folks could follow on to see whether you could dominate or, or whether you could uh, outright um, knock off these, uh, these Arabs. Um, we see, um, you know, Reagan went to Grenada, went to Panama, and it's over. These folks have a different culture. They believe in the Bible um, and so on, you know, um, European culture and so forth, life is precious, etc. But in the Middle East, uh, I mean, you're looking for a hundred years war and fifty years war, and, and it's like every generation born is the same deal. I don't know how it happens, but it, it just keeps going on. So you have to decide when you're starting, like, am I going to be in this for life for the next hundred years or what? And um, depending on what you want to do, then you know you could decide.